And we're live. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to the recap where me and my guests will be recapping the latest or this week's news on movies, games, and everything in between. Uh, joining me today is someone that has been on request for quite a while. He is my eldest brother. He is Miko Tong. Say hi, Meeks. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> and also joining us today uh, is our good friend, um, Ramon Lozano. Hopefully you guys know him as well. Hello. All right. So what's up, guys? Um, yeah, so today we have four topics, right? Um, we'll be talking about the Black Widow trailer that just came out this week, um, followed by Suicide <laughs> Squad trailer, the PG trailer, and the R-rated trailer. And finally, uh, Black Adam is finally filming starting today after seven years of production development. And our main topic of the day, we're going to be talking about the state of the DCEU in a post-Snyder Cut world. So that's going to be really interesting. So to get things started, let's, let's ask Miko. Miko, uh, the Black Widow trailer, what are your thoughts on it? I actually really um, love the trailer. You know, what's funny is uh, for the entire marketing campaign of Black Widow, there was not a single trailer that made me feel or made me think that I wanted to watch that in the theater. Yeah. Because, you know, like the whole like, I feel like the movie's so late. Like, it's quite obvious that it was never part of the slate and they only gave in because of the demand from the fans and the whole women empowerment movement thing and the whole wonder woman post wonder woman like world right so that's what i feel but anyways the trailer this trailer for some reason really hit me strong i don't know if it's yeah. because of the new scenes or the new context of the movie but also, the new score. The new score, I feel, is really strong. The whole um, play on the Avengers theme with the Russian take, I feel, really worked for me. So, this was the first trailer that made me think that, okay, I think I will, you know, if it was in the theaters, I would go see yeah. this in the theaters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I super agree with what you said. Apparently, like, they just forced it in the slate. Because to be yeah. honest... I really don't know what this movie... And given that it's a prequel, right? I don't yeah. know what it has to do in the grander scheme of things. Yeah. Right? And whatever Phase 4 or 5 is about, I feel like Black Widow is not gonna push the story forward. You know, I right? was actually lost. I was lost of where it actually fell into the time. I thought it was gonna be like a super prequel. I feel like it's gonna have flashbacks, of course. But it's actually right after Civil after War. After Civil and... War. Yeah. 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 So I'm sure, though, that Marvel thought of a way to use the movie to creatively expand the universe some more, though. I'm sure of it. Hopefully. Yeah. Uh, Roman, what are your thoughts on the trailer? I thought the trailer was really good. Like, um, Taskmaster looks like a badass villain. Like, a lot of the scenes, um, the fighting scenes, uh, the action scenes that they showcased a bit of, um, they hinted a bit of Taskmaster looked really good. Um, that Especially that scene where he was gliding down the building with the knife, uh, mm -hmm. with the sword. Yeah, that, that was yeah. Good. I fight, you know. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah. Maybe the, the action, the hand-to-hand the -hand combat in, like, Black Widow and, like, Almost reminds me of like the Winter Soldier, which I really yeah. loved. So I thought that was great. And then um, I also agree with Miko with regards to like it feels forced with the slate. But I also feel that um, they're maybe taking this as an opportunity to introduce new characters that they can um, sneak in in, in Disney yeah. Plus or something. They're gonna make it work. Yeah. So I mean, I mean, a lot of the actors uh, like. Florence Pugh, like she's like uh, Academy Award nominated from Little Women, the the sibling of uh, Black Widow. Maybe she can make appearances in the, some of the series. I don't know. And the dad, yeah. Rachel Weisz, like I, solid. 
actress, solid actress. Yeah, I, I solid like act. that. I, I like that actor. Uh, what's his name? The dude in yeah, Stranger Things. Yeah. Oh, uh, it's ah, uh, man, it's that dude, David <laughs> Harbor. Um, David Harbor, yeah, yeah was, being okay. Red Guardian. It's supposed yeah. to be like yeah. a passing of the torch, right? To Florence Pugh. Yeah. That's what it's supposed to be. Uh, yes. it be like, to okay, be like a strong because it has she to, is. She it is has to continue it. Yeah. Mm. So we'll see. I mean, Scarlett, I can't imagine like that. This would be the first time that there's a passing of the torch in the MCU. Right? Uh, and the, they're, they're already doing it with uh, Endgame, right? Winter Soldier. That's yeah, true. Spoiler, yeah. Spoiler. Yeah. What are you saying, Roman? No, no. I was saying, um, yeah, I mean, there was sort of a passing of the torch in the conclusion of yeah. Endgame when Cap handed the shield over to Falcon. So, sort of. Yeah. yeah. That's yeah. getting fleshed out now. Now. Yeah. yeah. So, that's also interesting. Stay tuned for our episode 4 review, which is going to be later. At around six thirty, yeah. So, all right. So, moving on to our next trailer. Uh, what do you guys think of uh, Ramon? What do you think of the Suicide Squad trailer? Okay, so honestly, like DC, they've never let me down with any of their trailers. So, Suicide Squad is no exception. Uh, I noticed, like, in the, with the sequel of Suicide Squad, it's a bit more colorful than the previous Suicide Squad. Like, if we're introducing bold colors like I'm not that familiar with the actual heroes or anti-heroes, but like the guy in yellow, you know. Um mm -hmm. yeah, Good like his, his costume looks super comic booky. Like yeah. and, and like and they're introducing more fantastical characters like a shark and the one that looks like a hyena or something. Yeah, that's a rat. That's a rat. rat. Rat cat, yeah, yeah. It's, it's a rat. Okay. Yeah. yeah, so it really like they're stepping like it's not as grounded in reality anymore. I, but I like the direction, you know. It, it seems really interesting. I just hope um, that they do a better like story versus the first Suicide Squad because that you know the villain of that didn't really go anywhere. So yeah, but this one looks a lot more promising already. So. And the trailer yeah. is great, like great trailer. I'm actually excited yeah. to, to see it. Yeah, Mix. What do you think of the trailer? Um, you know, my problem with the Suicide Squad you know, is, you know, the first Suicide Squad, it was also fantastical, Ramon. Remember, the villain was the witch, right? Oh, right. that's true. But uh, like the creatures <laughs> now, like it's like yeah. it's like it the weird. Weird. <laughs> you know, because like the thing is, audience. the thing is, because like that's the thing with what I'm like annoyed at right now because. You know, if you guys read like the Vanity Fair um, article with Chris Terrio, he revealed basically that Warner's never had like a clear plan for the movies. And it doesn't seem like that they do now. Like, is this new Suicide Squad um, movie like bouncing off of the Zack Snyder universe? Are we supposed to believe that a Superman uh, exists? So it's like, it's almost difficult to like, I mean, like for me, I like that, that um, they're stepping out of the whole grounded tone of the DC movies. Um, but, and for me, I like the trailer, huh? Like James Gunn, like you can clearly see James Gunn's like, uh, fingerprints on the movie yeah. you yeah. know sort of uh, like ghost in a way but not in a way but yeah. not super, like, yeah you can you can you can you can you can clearly see that king shark is gonna be groot right yeah <laughs> and then the clearly you know, the raccoon has the counterpart in a way <laughs> um you can you can tell who the strong one the strong ones are gonna be already strong act, uh, actors are like um uh, of course, no. Margot Robbie as Harley is going to be great. It seems like um, John Cena as Peacemaker has yep. Yep. a lot of potential. Oh, uh, man, what? he looks so John, good. <laughs> John Cena, I never thought, I never thought I would respect him as an actor. But if you guys saw Young um, Blockers... Yeah, blockers is so funny. You it's can so act. funny. 
John he Cena act, yeah. has has really good comedic timing. So if James Gunn uses him properly for the Suicide Squad, he will be really effective. So for me, like I like the overall the the overall tone of the movie. Um, I I have no doubt it's gonna be good. It's James Gunn. <laughs> I, I have yeah. no doubt it's gonna be I'm good. Excited. Entertaining, at least. His Harley Quinn already seems like the best version that's ever been shown on screen. Like yeah. she already looks great. Yep. Um, my only freaking concern so that is you don't know where the movie stands. Is it like a new universe? Are we like this bat the Ben Affleck Batman not exist in this? Like it's so confusing. And that's my biggest gripe with yeah. the DC movies so, right now. I'm pretty sure. I mean, Zack Snyder's movie is it, they they said it over and over. The Snyder Cut is a one and done thing. That's its own thing, its own timeline. Our timeline that the only timeline we're concerned about is really the Justice League that came out and everything. Yeah, after. but then, but then they're but they're saying now that it seems like Wonder Woman and only Aqu- Wonder Woman, they're, Wonder Woman and Aquaman will be the lone survivors of that universe. Everyone mm-hmm. else is getting like rebooted. And it's like Batman, uh, Joker. Yeah, so you're lost. Like you're lost. Well, like, they are doing the multiverse story, characters. right? Those yeah, two surviving characters. It's like. Okay, so moving forward, do you not know who Superman is? Do you not know who Batman is? Like, yeah, is there like a, a showrunner for the DCE? No. Right? There's none. No, right? and that's the problem. Yeah, that's our, that's the next topic, yeah. right? But we're talking about yeah. that. Yeah, yeah. So there were two Suicide Squad trailers, right? Ramon, yeah. which of the two was your um preferred? R rated or the PG Rebellion one? Uh. Like, how do you find the gore and the, like, what are your thoughts on the, yeah, the violence that the R-rated trailer had? I like the Rebellion one better. Yeah. I'm probably going to be you know. different you guys in this. Um, it's the most- shorter and tighter, right? Yeah, yeah. I, I, like, I like the humor. I like, the, the script looks like it's going to be amazing. Like, James Gunn has never let me down with his scripts, and this looks like it's not going to... Oh. Either. Um, I forgot to mention Sylvester Stallone as King Shark. <laughs> yeah, is Had. perfect. Perfect. That perfect. Is perfect. His voice, and, like that, is actually Sylvester Stallone's voice. Like, yeah, it's like, like that. It's so ridiculous that when King Shark talks, you hear Sylvester Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and it's gonna be like, like Vin Diesel as a group, the yeah. right? yeah. James I really love Kate Shark, man. Shit. The way his mind works, it's like the way he casts, it's so creative. Yeah. You know? No, yeah. like this looks like it's going to be amazing. It's, the script's going to be tight for sure. Um, yeah. It's going to be neat. The movie be looks good. The movie really does look good, but I'm treating it as its own for now because. Yes, yes, agreed. Yeah. I don't know where the universe I, is. Yeah, I know what you mean, Mix. Like, mm-hmm. I, I'm excited for the movie as, as it is. As yeah. a movie solo, whatever, it's exciting. You know, I'm excited to see King Shark and do his thing and Margot Robbie, obviously. But I can't get any more excited than that because for world building, right? For the world building aspect, like, yeah. like what is the plan here, guys? Are we just supposed <laughs> yeah. to follow like it's whatever goes already, kind of like the Fox's X Men thing, or are we supposed to that's, adhere that's to your rules, like. right? That's yeah, it's confusing. It's, that's what it's feeling like. Like, you know how the yeah. Fox X-Men movies, you kind of just accepted whatever crap they gave <laughs> us, right? Like, the timeline doesn't make sense. You're like, yeah. Bahala, it's been 20 years, and then you guys still look the same. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but that um, brings me up to a point I, asked, I talked about with Nico. Because when I when he first made me watch the Suicide Squad trailer, the sec, uh, you know, the sequel, I asked him, how come, like, a lot of the, all the heroes are different, except for Harley then he said, that's really how it is with Suicide Squad. It's like yeah. an expendable cast. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. so like in, in a way, it kind of works that it that it's kind of distilled from the rest of the universe because it can be its own procedural thing where in every sequel will be a new cast of... Yeah, but the thing it, is... In its own little bubble, but, you know? But the problem, the problem here is Marvel Studios, for better or for worse, changed um, the game. Change the like, standards of it's it's yeah. more difficult 
to appreciate or get yourself invested in a movie that you know is a lone yeah. movie and it's on its own. It's like people are so used to a cinematic universe. Yeah. You know, so it's like, yeah, okay. Like, like for, for example, like um, the Batman, but it's on its own. It's Earth more, two. yeah, it's, oh yeah. I mean, it's the whole multiverse thing makes it easier. But yeah. if it were a movie that weren't part of that at all, my gosh, man, like, I don't think you're going to get the fan base that excited. The standards have changed, really. How about for Joker though? That's sort of like a standalone, right? That one worked. Yeah, it I did. Saw. It does, and you know that even made a billion, right? It did. Yeah, surprising, dude. No, yeah, none surprising. of us expected that to make a billion. I mean, Come. That's the good thing with um, DC is that they have those pockets of success, but the Joker is not a franchise movie. No. Yeah. Uh, right? Can they make a sequel with Joaquin? Will it do well? I don't know. Come on, what are you gonna do? Adventures of the Joker? Yeah, yeah, like, <laughs> yeah. villain, right? Like, how do you make yeah. that? It's, it's tricky. Uh-huh. Sure. Right. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, yeah. 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 Go, Matthew, go. <clears throat> so yeah, I mean, I agree with everyone that like, yeah, uh, DC really it, perfectly how we tie into our next topic, right? Where we have Black Adam. It's finally filming after seven years since they announced. Uh, the Rock would be taking on the title of Black Adam, and I want to see what what are everyone's uh, like. How do they feel about Black Adam? I mean, I'll start off first. Um, you know, carrying uh, starting off where we just ended with the Suicide Squad discussion. I don't know where to place Black Adam. Also, it's like I think uh-huh. that applies to all DC movies. It's I like, like this. I like this topic. Yeah, so like, where do you go with this? Because like, I also read that, like, cause like here, Shazam's not even gonna be in Black Adam, and it's just like it's so yeah, disconnected. But that's they're weird. saying it's connected, so there's not much to go by. The only thing oh. that I'm really excited for for Black Adam is literally just because it's by the it's starring The Rock, and that's it. But in terms of again the world building, it does absolutely nothing. Shazam, in its own small way connected itself to the DCU. So you can say that it's still connected to Zack Snyder's um, universe. Um, And Shazam also in its own way connected Black Adam, right? Wasn't there a scene where they asked about like the empty seat, right? Mm. Mm -mm. Yeah, so, you know, you know, Warner's is crap connecting the universe but in those small ways they connected it now what i'm excited with with black adam is and i just watched the um the the dc fandom reveal with the rock and he really really um teases the justice league and so it ties in perfectly with those uh the new articles recently where it says that the rock is fighting to restore um zach snyder's universe and it makes total sense because um he the rock is a big celebrity now let's face it and he also knows that these comic book movies will only see success if it exists in a universe yeah He doesn't want his black... The Rock, you know, I love him to death, but he has a big ego. He doesn't want want his movie to not be connected to a universe. He wants it. Because in DC fandom, he, you know, he really says it. But at the very end, he he goes like, "Um, I need you guys to do me a favor. Can you tell the rest? Or can you warn the rest? The Flash, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Superman. And then he says this whole power shifting line. He wants it to exist in the DCEU. So Black Adam filming makes me super happy because I feel like The Rock is the way back 
to restoring the Zack Snyderverse. And also, if you th- if you think about it, The Rock, the way he looks, fits the aesthetic already. Oh yeah, mm, he fits yeah. the aesthetic yeah. already. Like, can you imagine? Like, come on, like uh, Robert Pattinson to beside The Rock is <laughs> right. <laughs> But the, Bat- <laughs> the, the Zack Snyder yeah. Batman looks like it could match up, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah that's so true. that's my take. Ramon, uh, your thoughts on Black Adam? Do you, do you know anything about the character? Yeah, well, I know like he's basically uh, like a, an Egyptian guy who, when he says Shazam, instead of turning into like a hero, he turns into like a villain, right, or something. With the equivalent yeah. powers. So my, my question is how I have like th- that's the only thing I've heard about this and like and the the rock is casted right but it, in terms of how does it fit into the Shazam movie because it's it, they're essentially using the same power right so mm-hmm. I'm a, right yeah so like power. From, from my understanding yeah is, um, that's, Black Adam was the previous Shazam yeah that's my mm-hmm. understanding yeah yeah, yeah yeah I thought we were talking yeah. about the Flash for some reason I thought you said Flash yeah. That's uh, what my understanding is too. So yeah, yeah. I'm assuming this um, Black Adam movie is set what thousands or hundreds of years before before Shazam. I, mean, I think it's in that Egyptian era, right? Yeah. So is it going to be like a period piece? It's not set. No. It, uh, like, oh that's no! What whenever the JSA just the society times, Max. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, has there been enough um, info leaked out with regards to setting? You know, plot anything like that or is it just like super very it, early in it's development gonna be, it's guaranteed a period piece because the heroes that they've casted are the justice society of america superheroes which so, is the generation of heroes prior to the justice league to, so if yeah. the justice league is your modern times guaranteed this is going to exist in the past oh okay okay this is going to be an origin but yeah, World yeah. War Two, what I hate I think. is that The Rock is trying so hard to reframe the whole anti-hero thing. You know. He wants to be a you hero. You right? know that when they wrote Black Adam to feature in Shazam, he was going to be a villain that was going to be defeated and was yeah. going to disappear. But they casted The Rock. Who's like, and you're like, huh? The <laughs> he biggest, of, he can't be a one and done <laughs> actor in the world. And you know what? I yeah. just, when I read the article of him um, having a clash with Warners regarding Zack Snyder, The Rock has full creative control over Black Adam. That's crazy. What? Yeah. Really? He has full creative control. So, what if in Black Adam he does a stupid dance again in Hobbs and Shaw? <laughs> And so it's like you know, I, 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 you know, and so it's like you know, when they casted The Rock, there was no way he was just gonna let it become a character that was gonna be defeated and disappear. He wanted a franchise. Imagine all of a sudden, Black Adam had his own movie. Yeah, he was originally mm. in Shazam. Yep. You, do you yeah, guys think it's crazy. It more powerful if he if he became the villain in the sequel to Shazam? I think I would have preferred that. Is that a unique? Was, but his argument yeah. was that the stories were so rich and so much that they couldn't fit it into one script. Screw you, oh. Rock. That's not yeah. the truth. You want I would have preferred him in Shazam one. And then could have his own movie afterwards. Or no, Shazam one, Shazam two. Where you would have Black Adam, and then Black Adam has his own movie. Because Ramon, he's a villain, right? He's he a straight-up villain, but he's being reframed as an anti anti-hero. And you know that this will not Black Adam one will be the only one. That's impossible. There's gonna be sequels. So, so when are... there are se- when there are sequels and his character is established, what are the storylines gonna be? Is it gonna be told from a villain point of view, or is he gonna be rescuing yeah. people? Yeah, it's that's the weird part. Also, like I don't, I really don't know what they're what they're gonna do. And also, like when they world build, like so they're building up the JSA. Since they're building up, building Black Adam up as a, like a hero, and then he's gonna play with the Justice League also in the future. It's like, huh? What, <laughs> what about really the weird end of for the me? Movie? He's like accepted. You see him like shaking hands with like 
Dr. Fate. Oh, Ramon. Yeah. Did you know that they casted Pierce Brosnan for Dr. Fate? Yeah, that, I was going to bring that up. Really? Autom- that automatically levels up the movie just a, a bit. Lot. Because they needed those... Um, those high caliber actors, like you know how there's Jeremy Irons in BVS, there was Russell Crowe in Man of Steel. Um, Pierce Black Brosnan. Adam, Black Adam didn't have that yet, but then Pierce Double Seven came Kent in. Kent Nelson. <laughs> That's gonna be so boss. That's gonna be nice to see him. So Doctor Fate's nice like uh, the good guy, but he's the enemy of um, Shazam. Of of um, no, sorry, no, 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 no. He's part of the Justice Society. He's Which like, is. He's like magical. That's what he is. Yeah, yeah. So he has his like, magic helmet. Like Adam, yeah. right? Yeah. yeah. Because Black Adam is like, the whole Shazam world is magical, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, Black Adam again, kind of just like for me, just just like Suicide Squad. I don't know where it plays in the grand scheme of things, right? It's yeah. just all That's over the place the right now. That's Are they the um, that you can't deviating keep in the universe? From the source yeah. material. You guys always tell me, right? Never fucking deviate from the source material. Right? As, no, as a rule. they don't. Honestly, like, they do a good job at respecting source material. But... Black well, we don't know anything yet for Black Adam. Yeah. We, they, they haven't really revealed much. You know, they've yeah. only revealed, like, casting choices. So, honestly, the characters that they've casted, I only know Hawkman, you know, and they're um they're um race bending Hawkman. What do you guys think about that? Uh the actor's cool. The actor's um the dude the in Invisible from Man. Invisible Man. I like that guy. Dude is hella jack, man. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. And he was fun. I mean, he was barely in Invisible Man, but when he was on screen, he was fun to watch. You know, he played his so role how well. How do you feel about the race man? I'm fine. I'm completely you fine know, with it. Like, yeah. You know, like I, I'm okay with it also because my I say that Hawkman's that character where it's like you don't really care for the race. But isn't mm-hmm. is that true? Or is that well, because we're not a Hawkman fan fan or not, right? exactly, right? Mm. right? No, that's a valid that's a valid question. Yeah, we could definitely right? tackle that. Like, in like an entire own video, actually. <laughs> like for us, yeah. it's okay because our investment in the character is quite minimal. But what if you're like a Hawkman fan and then it got re- like your character? Yeah, that's, that's the thing. Me like, in the first I, ever movie appearance of the character. True, true. For, I think that's also a factor. It's the first appearance, then it'd be nice if it's like however he was in the comic at first, right? Yeah. So, But for me, the man, it's like since DC is already really embracing this multiverse thing, I don't really... You want to cast like a female Batman? Oh, that's just a bad woman, obviously. But like, but what if it you want to change in the main universe? Yeah, there. That, that's where, like, <laughs> that's a very lengthy discussion. Right? What if it's the yeah. main version of yeah, the Yeah, yeah. Yeah, well, that's the casual, yeah. I mean, for me, 100% okay with it because, like I said, I don't even know who, this, who the yeah. hot. I really like the actor though. So like so yeah, going back to what I was saying, like with the characters they were ca- they casted, I only really know Hawkman and Doctor Fate. The other ones like Adam Smasher. Oh, and, no, I don't Yeah, like I'm yeah, I'm not familiar really the, with yep. the Justice Society. Doctor Fate is probably the one I'm most familiar with, only because yeah. he crosses over to Justice League storylines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. But, um, yeah. I, I'm only excited of it just because of the rock. That's it. <laughs> yeah, that's it. That's it. That's really it's just it. star power. And I'm wondering, will it be under the New Line Cinema or will it be under Warner Brothers? Like New Line. What Cinema, does that change? The budget, right? Yeah, like yeah, New Line Cinema, budget division. Like Shazam was under New Line, and if you go back and rewatch Shazam, you can clearly see that the. Yeah. Budget was yeah. a lot smaller. It feels like yeah. a smaller movie, right? Compared yeah. to um, yeah. say, so Aquaman or Wonder if Woman. You have a movie set or directly connected to that movie, but you're starring the biggest movie star in the world. Are you still giving it a small budget? Or are you giving it a oh, bigger? Right. I don't think I've seen The Rock in a small budget film 
in a long ass time. Oh, man. dude, he has some pretty cheap looking movies though. But skyscraper even his low budget ones. I didn't watch that. I didn't watch even that his one. low budget ones look higher budget than Shazam. <laughs> That's true. Yeah. 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 So yeah. Anyways, uh, let's move on to our main topic. This is super interesting. I've been wanting to talk about this since Snyder Cut came out, and that is where does DCEU go from here? And by here, meaning where does the DCEU go in a post Snyder Cut world? Because whether you liked the Snyder Cut or not, it is bringing up a valid conversation of like you now have people who really wanted to continue because they saw what it was they saw the Snyder cut and they just want to see it through and some people actually like that world they're building but at the same time you have people who say even w- WB as as it stands the, the fact is the main canon is the Justice League that came out and all the movie afterwards and you throw that you throw out the fact that um, some statistics are already coming out uh, with Snyder Cut and Sna- the Snyder Cut initially was the second most watched HBO Max movie and then it got reported just a few days ago that it is actually the <laughs> third biggest opening which is kind of like you were everyone was expecting the Snyder Cut to be the top but it turns out it's um, Wonder Woman what night Godzilla yeah, I think it's Wonder Woman. Uh, we could fact check this. Uh, Wonder Woman and Godzilla. That are the yeah. top two. But, Let me confirm that one. Yeah. But, you know, so, it's because, like, um, the whole Snyder Cut movement was, come on, as big as it was, it's not like everyone knew what it was. You yeah. Know? And I think to the general public, the re-release was misinterpreted as to like, come on, it's not going to be that different. Mm -hmm. And if you really hated that first movie and didn't know the Snyder Cut movement, you were never going to watch this re-release, no matter how how it was marketed. So so that's the reason why it didn't do like Wonder Woman 1984 numbers. Because that's a new movie. Yeah, it's a that's a yeah. new movie you know the standard cut the song is a re-release although we all know it's a new movie yeah yeah you know and so um that's i mean that's that's my take on on that you know you got ramon what, what do you think why it wasn't number one you mean yeah. or yeah. My take on that? Yeah. no like generally yeah oh well I thought it was an amazing movie, number one. Like, all my issues with the theatrical release was addressed. Like, all the awkward cutting, all the um, scene, tra- the weird scene transitions. Um, now, like, it was an amazing movie. My only issue is uh, Snyder just can't, like, isn't the kind of director that can tell a story in two and a half hours, you know. Maybe he's really meant for, like, streaming, not for the silver screen. Uh, that's my take on it. But so, like, I don't know if he's the right guy. I don't know if Warner will get um, him. You know what I read? If, like I said, if you guys had read the Chris Terrio inter- um, interview, yeah. Do you know that when he um? Oh well, no, this was for BVS. I mean, for Justice League, he did write that. That was like a solo. Yeah, yeah. That was really a, a long movie, but that's because also yeah. the studio mandated to introduce all of these new characters. Yeah, yeah. I mean, they didn't have like a movie per <laughs> per, car- per hero, you know, right? That's the yeah. issue. Like, if what you guys, Roman? If, if you guys go read the interview with um, Chris Terrio, he Warner Brothers really went to him and, and went to him and went, "Okay, this is the slate, adapt." So it's like. The Justice League movie really came after like how many movies were established on like three? Yeah, well, good one. Yeah. So they really uh, come on. How are you gonna establish five characters? Uh, revive Superman, establish four characters in less. Yeah. In less, right? 
and that's why it brings up like a great point. Uh, that's why Roman was saying um, what Roman said earlier that Zack Snyder can't tell a story and uh, can't tell uh, can't tell his sto- his his story in a two or two and a half <laughs> hour movie. Half exactly. long, right? And that's why. Uh, what what do you guys think of like? Maybe why can't Warner Brothers just continue this Snyder verse in HBO Max as a limited series and continue your main canon? Why isn't no, that an option? It be confusing think, for the general audience is one. I don't think that it should be. I think it should be continued and I don't think it should be limited to HBO Max because first um after it came out Restore the Snyderverse trended for 11 days okay um trends on twitter last for like a few hours yeah but when a trend you know settles in and gets comfortable like restore the standard cut did it means something there's momentum there is passion from your fan base so warner brothers has changed their minds Many times. How many times has the DCEU been been restructured in these last few years? They've done it yeah. in the past. Why can't you do it now? Why now? Now that you have a bona fide fan base who is passionate and asking for more movies, why is it now that you can't budge? Why is it now? All of a sudden, it's like nope, nope, cancel, cancel, cancel. Why? Right? Like, come on. It doesn't make sense, even from a business standpoint. It just doesn't make sense. There's yeah, like, yeah. there's already people asking for it. You know, like as to now, they're just gonna test out new, new takes on these characters. Yeah, but then I think the problem here is, what do you if you continue it? What do you do with all the other pieces that are set in motion? Like, What happens with the Robert Pattinson? What happens with the Black Adam? That's not the Black Adam has nothing to do to... with the Snyder cut. No, the Black Snyder verse rather. Black Adam, you can easily, easily, you can easily you can easily bring back. You can easily um kind of like mesh him into the universe, because like the Snyder cut, Justice League. I mean, Justice League has said like it teased like into the future, but. You don't have to address that yet. Yeah, that's why. Like one way to go forward is to not make a Justice League two. Just start making solo movies for all of these. I agree. That I got agree. established in Justice League. Don't yeah. do a team up anymore. My, I remember my initial worry after watching the Snyder <laughs> cut was I like the nightmare scene. I like that story and that world that they built. It looks super, you know, intriguing and everything. But I would hate for us to get there right away because that would have to mean that like we don't really get to enjoy Superman and all his Superman yeah. glory. It's gonna go from him from yeah. from Justice League all the way to him being evil again. Yeah. So I want that breathing room, right? Yeah. Uh, super agree on that one. But yeah, um, you got Roman. So you you don't think that uh, uh, the Snyder Cut should. Continue on in just a show. Do you also think it should just be? A, do you think it should also be in a movie uh, as a franchise? Rather? So my take on it is two options. Um, they could do like number one, keep it as a limited series on HBO Max for streaming, or they can do like a Harry Potter take on it. Just tell a big a chap like per chapter. Um, you know yeah. they can do it per chapter each But each movie. Are you looking at it as? A Justice League movie, definitely is a Justice League movie yeah. because if you watch Justice League, you can't help but enjoy seeing all these heroes in yeah. one film. So that's why that's why my 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 feel for that is like, I think doing another another Justice League movie is like a big risk in the eyes of the studio for now. Solo character movies will be less money. And less risks, right? Now, go, think back to like the Justice League, the Zack Snyder Justice League movie, right? Which of those characters do you not want to see more movies of? Because for me, like the Flash didn't win me over in the first one, but um, 
after seeing him in this one, um, I wouldn't mind seeing more Ezra Miller um, Flash movies. Cyborg, I would love to see more Ray Fisher Cyborg movies. Hell yeah. Right? God damn. And, like, and the others are already like given, right? So it's like, why do more Justice League movies? Why not just restore the Snyderverse as a universe and just let the characters grow from there? Why start at zero again? Yeah, I mean, oh yeah, that makes sense too. Right? But uh, I want the arc to leave because obviously they tease the shit out of Doomsday in the Snyder version, right? Like you want to see that. dark Sorry. side, dark side. Yeah, uh, you want to see that final. Yeah. Battle. But how long did Marvel take the show? Yeah, no, they can take their time. I agree with you. Take, yeah. take your time. I'm all for that. That's more content for the fans. Because now, if you think about it, what Zack Snyder's Justice League did was it did what um Marvel's Phase One did. Yes, it established the arc, right? And you know where it you know where all the, it established all the the key players, and it teased the arc. Yeah. So now just branch out like embrace yep. it and branch out yep <laughs> yeah is it realistic for a big studio run by suits uh that's the keyword it's run by suits it's not run by like you know, you know yeah that's you know thing. i was i was to go 180 on all their planning all their forecasting they've all done it in the past not, no they've done it in the past yeah, they it's introduced. Just, they introduced an entire an entire slate, and we only got up to like what movie four. <laughs> They've canceled movies in the past, and like I said, you don't have to. Cancel. I still want that Nightwing movie. Robert Pattinson's <laughs> Batman can exist in the multiverse. Like yeah. Joker exists in the multiverse. No, no movie has to be canceled. Also, one of my worries with with this, with the Snyderverse, I do want it to continue because it is nice. I mean, I liked what I saw in the Snyder Cut. But if I had things my way, that's not the world I would have built. You know, yeah. it would have been a little bit more Marvel, really. You know, like, just, I mean, the Aquaman vibe is really just right for me. The Aquaman, Wonder Woman vibe. The Snyder, the Snyderverse is a little bit too serious. It's a little bit... I mean, I get it. No. I get. I get. It's epic no. and it's grand and it's nice. Yeah. I get it, but I don't want that being the main continuity, and that's why I'm super fine with it being a show. And then you have your your DC proper. No, mm -hmm. well, well, when I say restore the Snyderverse, I don't mean uh, um, Zack Snyder should continue the movies or that the visual tone of his movies should continue. No, no, no. When I say restore the Snyder restore the Snyderverse, I mean restore the character arcs and the characters that have already been established inside the Snyderverse. Aquaman um, oh, premiered in BVS, all dark under Zack Snyder, but then when he branched out into his own movie under a different director, he was brightened up in tone and it performed well. So, so who knows? What if someone took Another character, yeah. the Flash, Flash character, like, okay. brightening them up a bit in tone, and who knows, we might see the same. So, so yeah, y you, where do you stand on the Snyderverse? I, like the I, like the story it's telling, the tone. Is it how you would have wanted your DCEU to be? Do you want it to continue? Do you not want it to continue like me? Um, if we're talking about DCEU, where um. <laughs> It's set in the times of Aquaman time. That is, that's DC proper. Yeah. yeah. Aquaman, would, Birds of Prey. To, I would like to see more of it. Yeah. You know, so, the nightmare, that's too far. Like, I don't want to see any nightmare stuff right now. It's, yeah. <laughs> it's too much. It's too much for now. If, but if it's DCEU in the time of Aquaman, then yes, I would like to see um, more of it. Yeah. You, Ramon, what are your thoughts? Like, you, do you like the Snyderverse? Do you like what he established in the Snyder Cut? Like, that world, you know, that very, very... Well, honestly, I'm also not a yeah. fan of the nightmare scenes, um, but it's I can respect them because that's really his style, and it, it was good storytelling, and it really uh, 
brought the whole arc with Dark Side forward. Um, so I appreciate that. But no, I don't really like the nightmare scene. My favorite like scenes are like it's not you know, just the nightmare scene, all right? It's like the overall like yeah. the world they live in. The Snyder verse is the DCEU where Aquaman, Wonder Woman, um, Superman, it's where they all live. Wonder Woman was produced by um, Zack Snyder. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and I think I think he was also involved with Aquaman. So, you know, these movies, is the, this is the Snyderverse. So the question is, do you want to see more storylines branch off from these existing storylines? Yeah. Like, you know well, how the characters are treated really? Like, how Aquaman is treated in his own movie and in the Snyder Cut, completely different, right? In the Snyder Cut, it's always that idea of these heroes are gods. They're gods among men. And that's how they are portrayed in the Snyderverse, in the Snyder Cut. But if yep. you go to Aquaman, you kind of don't get that, oh man, this is a god I'm talking to, right? Yeah. They, they throw in all the humor and the color and whatnot. And that changes the overall world that they're building. So that's yeah, what I'm kind of, saying. It's like, more yeah. like... Like Man, Man of Steel, we're in like when you see a superhero, you, you'll be like scared. We're in yeah. like in you or like you know the Aquaman movie. I, like seeing a superhero is like commonplace almost. Man right? of yeah. Steel still exists in the DCEU, huh? so yeah, that's still a DCEU yeah. movie. I like the Snyder versus treatment of superheroes because it's a fresh take from what we've come to experience True. from Marvel, and yeah. it would. So that's why I like it. Um, you know, the, like Marvel and DC shouldn't be so like, yeah, like, consistent already or like the same or blended in. So, yeah, the, the, uh, the difference with DC and Marvel is that DC doesn't uniform the the tone. Yeah, it does, yeah. Like, look at the Marvel, Marvel movies; consistent. they all look the same. Yes. visually, like the filter used in every yes. movie. Very is light. The, Right? Yeah. Yep. So with DC, you know, I've yeah. I've made peace that those visual cues will differ from movie to movie. So, it's so jarring. Yeah. <laughs> so for me, when I support the Snyderverse, I mean the stories and character arcs. I want these characters to continue, whether it's a different director or not. Yep. Yep. I mean, I think one of the things that will really fix this, you know, a lot of our concerns is the Flashpoint movie. I think that there's a lot riding in on this movie. But I'm willing to bet... Flashpoint anymore because the director went on yeah, yeah. and said, can you guys please stop calling it Flashpoint? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> but it's basically just their way to clean up. To clean up yeah. whatever it is they believe they need to clean up. I'm just wondering... Can they nail it? Because that's a lot of dirt to clean up. That's a lot of loose threads and whatnot. And the fact that they can't even nail, they can't. They're they're like, if you guys don't already know, they might. Um, there's castings of Michael Keaton to come back as Batman, but recent reports are saying he's but not shaky, officially right? signed in. Yeah, because yeah, he's more concerned about COVID cool. and whatnot. Mm. So it's like, okay, you're trying to build this multiverse. And your Michael Keaton was supposed to be your hook to the multiverse, and even he's unsure of the movie. I don't know, but yeah, yeah, I guess you know, another, like, you know what I was saying. I um my thoughts yesterday uh, when I read the Chris Terrio interview, because in that interview he reveals that there was one night where they where they were asked to come to an event, and they were kind of like paraded in front of like these invest the invest, the shareholders to sort of like restore faith and trust in the DCEU. And he says that during that night, he was pulled aside by like a quote unquote Wall Street guy and basically told him how to write Batman. Yeah. And so, yeah. And so it's like, you know, Marvel, the reason why um, there's such quality control was because before they were acquired by Disney, they were their own. Yeah. Kevin Feige laid out the rules. Yeah. And when they were acquired, I'm sure he he part of the deal was um, 
total autonomy. I'm sure of it. I'm sure mm-hmm. Kevin Feige is operating on his own. I'm sure they trusted. They oh, tr- for they have sure, trust. man. Yeah. <laughs> and so and so that's why it's easy for Marvel to keep this uniform tone and storyline. But with the Chris Terrio interview, you, we now know that with Warner Brothers in DC, even people who aren't in the creatives are, get involved. And so when yeah. may, when people like that are getting involved in the process people who don't know the characters, you're never going to have one uniform vision. It's impossible. And that's why I think for me, like right now, DC is in a very tough um, position. They're never going to accomplish what Marvel is accomplishing. I know that now after the Chris Terrio interview. I know that. If you guys don't already know, um, Chris Terrio is the writer, the writer of Justice League. He No, he's the writer of Argo. So he worked with Ben Affleck, and he was the writer in Batman vs Superman, uh, and he's also the writer of Justice League, the Justice League Snyder Cut. For until BBS, it got rewritten, though, he was only brought on for rewrites. He rewrites. Does not, yes. He does not take a sole uh, writing credit for that. He does yeah. take a writing credit for Zack Snyder's Justice League. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it really sucks. Like seeing that report. I'll leave a link down below, guys. Um. But that report was really just disheartening. You really yeah. see where the where the crack started. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, you, know, you can really see it. And, um, you, know, you feel bad for Chris Terrio. He even talks about how like his he loses like he he lost some of his like Hollywood friends yeah. when um, BVS and Justice League were panned or something like that. But like he talks his name about was tainted. Yeah, he talks his name about got tainted. points in the interview where like. Some of the things that BVS were criticized for were set in stone before he even yeah. came on. Yeah. And so, yeah. like for me, Chris Terrio is a is an excellent writer. Come on, when you watch the um, BVS director's cut, there's a good movie there. Mm-hmm. Uh, Zack Snyder's Justice League is a really good movie. So yeah. Chris Terrio, you know he nailed it. It was the studio interference. He even yeah. talks about how like Justice League was vandalized. He Ramon, did you yeah. read that? Uh, are you referring to Josh Whedon vandalizing yeah. Justice League? Yeah, he was like, this was not re-, like in my opinion, it was vandalized. So yeah. you know, like I feel for him, man. Like honestly, like I I actually went on Twitter and searched his name for tweets right after the the article was released and pucha and daming like and then Chris Terrio chose violence today. You know, like oh, he man. had a lot of support, man. Yeah. Yeah. yeah like, it's... You feel for him. Parang it's like a lot you know like parang in the original BVS draft before he came on, the Africa scene, Lois Lane was like punched. And he wrote that yeah. out. Yeah. Yeah. So, so okay, to hmm? anything? So, you know, so that's why I think like Warner's is lost. Yeah. You know, like there is no clear plans. There's no one steering the ship. And there's basically the classic case where there's too many sh- um, cooks in the kitchen. Is this yeah. even its own independent studio from Warner's or is it just part of Warner's thrown in? It's part of Warner's. Yeah. That's right so, there. Yeah. Let me let's let's end this episode with a nice with a hot question. If you guys, you as fans of the DCEU, knowing everything you know now, right? And you know, just fans of movies and cinematic universe in general. If you guys were head of what of Warner Brothers yeah. for the next 10 years or for five, five, eight years. How would you clean up? What is your plan for the world building? Or do you guys think they should still do this cinematic universe? Should it be, you know, back to the old ways where it's just random different movies, no interconnected universe uh, storylines or whatever? How would you guys fix it? Who, you know, who wants to take a crack at uh, it? Well, I have a very basic answer to this. Um, <laughs> Snyder <laughs> originally had a five movie arc, right? And um, Justice League was part three. Uh, why not just let him finish it? Is my take. 
you know. No, no, no. I'm not saying just that that thing. I'm saying as head of Warner oh. Brothers, what's your plan for the next five to eight years? All the new movies you're gonna announce. Are you gonna announce shows? Do you want to build a cinematic uh, universe? Honestly, if you want like to grow your fandom and like you know, you need a cinematic universe. Hard to say because Mar- Marvel made it precedent already. I feel. Um, Although not to say that you can't have success with individual movies, it's just that um, as a fan, I like to be rewarded for my investment and I'm sure I'm not alone. So what I would do is, because you can clear, you can tell I'm a bit biased um, in favor of Snyder's, I would still let him finish his five movie arc. And then after that, I would expand. I would expand pa- using his five movie arc as like the foundation you know, um oh yeah yeah that would be a simple it's a bit of a simple answer but i'm not super yeah. it's like for me it's super difficult it's super difficult right now because like like if you're asking me like if we were to take the position now today and yeah, the current, now, all the mess. The, the all current the mess. movies have yes. already been either made or shooting it's difficult because it's like okay how where do you where do you put Gagadot and Jason Momoa? Because they're super they're super successful, but they're part of the Zack Snyder universe. Can they have their own trilogies and still be a part of the five movie arc? Because you're thinking of trilogies and, and solo franchises. Yeah, <laughs> think of the cinematic universe. Yeah. Where are they existing? Yeah. So Gagadot and Jason Momoa were birthed. From the Zack Snyder universe. Yes. And they're both super successful. But then yeah. you have this new Batman movie that's shot. And Ben Affleck is like, can you really get him back for more movies? So it's that's like crazy. So it's like, where? How? Like, like what are you gonna do? Like, do you wanna start fresh with Robert Pattinson? and cast younger actors for these characters. Like, for example, have a younger Superman, have a younger Aquaman, younger... And that's the problem. Because if you're going to recast Aquaman, you're already letting go of... Yeah. Uh, like, uh, the whole, right? yeah. Someone that's yeah. super well successful. Yeah. Yeah. And that's so, why it's so... It's super <laughs> it's difficult. difficult. They're like... This is the first time that I've really, really realized that Warner Brothers DC is in they don't know what they don't know what's happening. They really do not. You know, um, yeah. if you ask me though, I would if I had my powers, like Warner Brother powers, I would let the Batman exist on its own. Yes, that would work. If I can get Ben Affleck to continue as Batman, I will continue this um, this current universe. You know, if like if it if it can only compete like finally if the universe can only go as far as having the characters complete trilogies for their solo arcs, then that's enough. Because they're already established, like I said, there's already a fan base. There's guaranteed money behind it. And I think honestly, after the Zack Snyder Justice League, faith in the universe was somewhat restored. Yeah. Because it won over reviewers that insanely crushed it in their reviews, you know. Yeah, yeah. The YouTube reviewers, there's so many that changed their tune. So yeah. you can only assume that it did so for other audiences also. So why yeah. not give it a shot? That's yeah. Uh, so what you're saying, just to um, like clarify if I understood you correctly. Like just let you know, Aquaman, Wonder Woman, Batman, Superman finish their trilogies. But yeah, what about if you can't get them for more? Yeah, if you can't get them for more. Yeah. What about like finishing the five movie arc? I don't need not- it. I don't yeah. need it. I don't need it. Because, like, it. Okay, because his yeah. arc, his arc goes too far. I yeah. only need the DCEU to exist in the time of Aquaman. Just yeah. give me present time. I don't so, need I don't need any more past ones and I don't need future ones. 
Give so me the like, present. Does this um does your arc include like that final face off or showdown with Dark Side? That they if tease. It, I don't if, need it really. You don't need it. If if, if it I don't leads, need it. If it leads to it, if they're successful, it leads to it. Great. But right yeah. now, I would just really be happy to see more adventures with the solo. Like, damn. Like, we've never had a solo Batman movie in the DCEU. Yes. He's always with someone. So, like, even The Flash, although we're getting The Flash already. So, I wouldn't mind seeing just solo movies for the time being. And just tease, you know, just do an Easter egg here and there. Yeah. I think, well, for me, you know, if I were the uh, head of Warner Brothers, the very first thing I would need to do is you need to establish your big three. And right now, it's very... We don't, we don't, we don't even know the state of your of, of the Trinity, right? You have Superman, Wonder there's Woman. A new Superman. There's a, exactly. There's a new Superman movie. So you have your, your Wonder Woman in DC proper, right? Yeah. And people love her. That's cool. And Batman exists in this universe as Wonder Woman, as Ben Affleck. But he's but he not going to be playing Batman again, right? But He will be in the Flash, current... though. Yes, he will be. But so, so the problem with... So Wonder Woman's fine. She's well, she's well liked and she's existing in the main universe and she still has movies afterwards. She has Wonder Woman 3. The problem with Batman is in DC proper doesn't exist anymore because Ben Affleck is not reprising his role as Batman. He has his final thing in Flash. I get that. But in DC proper, ba- Batman's not, Ben Affleck's not going to become Batman anymore. And in replace, we have Robert Pattinson, who is in Earth 2. So he's not in Wonder Woman's universe. Superman, he also exists in DC proper with Wonder Woman. But... Is Henry Cavill going to come back? Most likely not. And the rumor is they're going to recast, or it might be in a multiverse that we're not sure of, right? They're going to be casting a black Superman, either DC proper or Earth 2 with Robert Pattinson or Earth 3. I don't know. But that's 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 my point. Who knows, right? Again, that's, a, that's the thing with the multiverse, right? But my point is you can't build a DC universe without having the three like the, the three established so whatever it is they do if they don't plan to use ben affleck anymore you need to find a way to to gel your robert pattinson with your one with your uh, gal Gadot, and your superman needs how can you not have superman so they need to solve that regard for me it's regardless if it's henry cavill coming back or they're, if it's really that black Superman, they need to figure out that trinity. They're in a tough position because, you know, the success of Gal Gadot and Jason Momoa, it makes things very difficult because you can't brush them aside. Now, yeah. Can you, put, can you put Robert Pattinson beside Jason Momoa? Can you imagine how tiny Batman is going to look beside <laughs> Aquaman? <laughs> Like, it just doesn't work. Like, you can't mesh those two universes together. It's completely yeah. different. So, so they, they okay. the, shot themselves in the So, going off that, I, under, I get that um, Robert Pattinson's Batman can't live with uh, live in the world of Scylla, Jason Momoa, and whatever. I completely agree. Then that's, again, another problem. Who the hell is the Batman we're supposed to follow in this universe? <laughs> right? That's a it's a, like, it's an emoji. That's why reading that Chris Terrio article was heartbreaking, honestly, as a DC fan. Because now you know. You know 100% that there is no plan. Yeah. No. I'm sure of it. There's- and The Rock is fighting. That's why I'm, you know, I'm for The Rock. Because like, if he can get that shit reestablished, then at least there's a universe, no matter how small it is. There's one. Yeah. And I think that he can kind of save it. Imagine Hopefully. Henry Cavill versus The Rock, no? Yeah. <laughs> Damn. That'd be good. That'd be good. I really, really, really hope they bring back Henry Cavill. It's just... It will... Like the, he looked good one of the, Superman, right? In he, he looked, Justice League. 
Yeah, he he, he really good. does. Good. Like he just never had his time to shine as Superman. Yeah. <laughs> you yeah. know, and he didn't have that opportunity. <laughs> That's so unfair. What? Even even Steppenwolf wasn't that like he Steppenwolf was nothing for Superman, right? Like well, it was, obviously yeah. they had to make his return. I mean, I also thought it was kind of ridiculous how Superman just kind of like Yeah, tossed him around like a yeah, ragdoll. Like, he didn't yeah. even get a punch into Superman and his axe broke so easily. <laughs> yeah, so But like I was thinking the part because it was his triumphant moment, right? Yeah, no, like, and, and the like you, the you didn't have Superman movie, for like man. three fourths of the movie. Yeah, yeah. So like that one bit that you were gonna get him, it had to be like perfect. Yeah, now. I think that's yeah. like yeah. the payoff for like investing in them, like reviving Superman. Like a yeah. big chunk of the plot was just them bringing him back to life. But right? just when you revive him, that was he's gonna struggle. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Right. Yeah. But how did you feel when that scene came on where Clark was walking? In the ship, and the Man of Steel score came on. That was that was cool. I enjoyed that. Like, did Superman's return feel more earned in this version? Yeah, be- like because the journey, um, like it wasn't just there, right? Yeah, the journey was not fleshed out. <laughs> and Joss sure. Whedon, like it was just there. That plot was just there, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh man, uh, what state of DCEU? Oh, so. Actually, fun to watch on screen. They just need to give him a worthy villain. You know, um, Zack Snyder's yeah. Justice League, one hundred percent, gave me some of my very favorite Superman live action content. Like, damn! Like the visuals that we were given for Superman and Justice League. I don't know. Yeah, get the visuals were nice, again. but it's mm-hmm. a bit hassle that he was wearing the black suit. So it affected what? I, like, I don't know. That's really, yeah, really annoying, seeing the black suit. No, like, for me, like, the black suit was okay. What threw me off was that he was still wearing it in the last scene where he ripped the shirt open. Because yeah, the yeah. black suit, it's like, yeah. I get it. Because my theory, Ramon, was when he was revived, he, you know how he was kind of like slowly getting his memories back? My theory is he was actually still more Kryptonian, more Kal-El than Clark because not all the memories had come back yet. And so um, when he was going through the ship, you see him easily walk past the red and blue suit. But yeah. when the black suit comes in, it draws okay. his attention. Yep. And, you know, Zack Snyder said in an interview that the way he interpreted the black suit, if you remember in Man of Steel, they're all in black suits. Oh, yeah, that's true, right? Yeah. So for him, it was like, it's more home. And then the red and blue suit is his hero suit. Like so, for me, suit, right? so for me, the black suit at the end made sense because maybe he wasn't Clark yet. But in the scene where he was ripping his shirt open, that should have been red and yeah, blue. Yeah, yeah. Why would you ruin the you classic know, okay. moment by not making it the proper colors? Okay. The thing is that I get what you you know I get that uh, that imagery and that metaphor, if you will, for the for the suit and whatever. That's clear, you know that that's an art that's an argument that could be made, but that's something that isn't picked up by the audience. Yeah. Really, yeah. you're yeah, really supposed to do your that. research, and that's not what a movie experience is really supposed to be yeah. about, you yeah. know. So <laughs> when I saw the suit at the end, the whole time I'm just like, oh, I don't know why are you wearing this fucking suit? I don't get it. <laughs> Because the fans right. know it then. But, I mean, Zack Snyder did say that this was really, like, tailor fit for the fans now, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, yeah, that wraps up our very first episode of, I don't know what this is called, the recap tentatively. Um, yeah, I hope you guys had a good time uh, hearing our insights. We get really sweaty, especially the three of us, when we start talking DC. <laughs> So, uh, stay tuned for more of that, where we get not just sweaty, but it kind of gets really intense with our arguments. I'm sure that's going to happen eventually. Um, I'm trying to you guys... <laughs> yeah, um, especially Ramon's usually the one who kind of triggers us with his 
with his fanboy um, comments Marvel here. Light, and Marvel comments. We got a Marvelite here. We have a Marvelite in this show. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, um, I'm not sure what you guys uh, thought. Um, if what are your thoughts on the state of DCEU? Um, do you guys want to see the Snyder verse continue in the in the form of an HBO Max series, or do you guys want to see it continued as the main? St- um, uh do you want it to become the dc proper in movies uh let me know in the comment section down below and yeah stay safe everyone i hope you enjoyed our episode so yeah bye